Hi there folks, welcome to another informative networking lesson in the CompTIA Network Plus course. The topic in this video is obviously common ports, which are also known as well-known ports. So let's start at the beginning by first discussing what are ports. Well, you can think of ports or port numbers, should I say, as windows or doors into your environment. Each port number is a window or a door for digital traffic of some kind to potentially flow through. Believe it or not, there are actually 65,535 port numbers. So a port number can be anything from zero all the way through to 65,535, which is insane if you think about it. That's a crazy amount of port numbers, especially if you think about this from a security point of view, to manage all of that and keep an eye on all of that. Yikes. The good news here is most port numbers are generally blocked or closed by default. This is good because the average Joe that is not an IT like you or me will definitely not know where or how to go and close port numbers, let alone what a port number actually is. If all port numbers were open by default, that would be one massive security problem for the average user and, well, probably for us as well because we would have to go and manage those people. Now, as for the main topic of this specific video, which is common ports, you can also call them well-known ports if you want. It's the same thing. These well-known port numbers start from zero and go all the way to 1,023. All of those port numbers are considered well-known or common port numbers, but some of them especially are probably more common and well-known than others in that little pool. So if you go check, take, take that whole pool of 1,023 port numbers, yes, all 1,023 of the first port numbers are considered well-known, but some of them in that pool are probably considered extra well-known. It's not an actual thing, but you might as well call it a thing. It's not something you'll really find officially in any documentation, you know, but some of the port numbers in that range I just mentioned are way more well known and way more commonly used for everyday things that you guys can probably relate to. More on that later. Now, if you're wondering about all the rest of the remaining port numbers that are left in the pool, the port numbers from 1024 all the way through to 49,151 is called registered ports. Still not all of the remaining port numbers though. Registered port numbers are non-well-known ports, basically the opposite, that are used by vendors for their own server applications. After all, not every possible application capability will be reflected in a well-known port, and software vendors should be free to innovate. Of course, if another vendor chooses the same port number for a server process and they are running on the same system, there would be no way to distinguish between these two seemingly identical applications. It's a bit of a pickle now, isn't it? All right, folks, so just to summarize these port numbers, including the remaining bunch we didn't mention earlier, the port numbers zero all the way through to 1023, which we mentioned already, those are well-known port numbers, also called common ports. The port numbers 1024 all the way through to 49,151 are called registered. And then all the remaining ports we did not cover yet, which would be from port 49,152, all the way to the last port number, which was 65,535. Those all are called dynamic ports. Now, in case anyone is now wondering what the heck are dynamic ports, well, it's not really part of this video, first of all, but just to throw it in here as an extra for you guys, ports that are dynamic are not assigned. They are not controlled and they are not registered. They are used for temporary or private ports. They're also known as private or non-reserved ports. Okay, folks, and then I have something 
extra I would like to show you. I'm going to show you some examples of extra well-known port numbers. Yeah, that. I mean, this video is about common port numbers after all. <laughs> so these extra well-known port numbers I want to show you are not actually called that. The term doesn't actually exist. I was thumb sucking it. I'm just making that up to help explain these port numbers that I'm about to demonstrate. These port numbers obviously fall within the range of common port numbers. They're still falling there. So they are indeed common ports. But these ports are the port numbers you and me would encounter in our everyday life, in our everyday work. It doesn't mean you won't encounter the other remaining common port numbers or use them. You might encounter them depending on your unique circumstances. I'm simply saying the ones I'm about to list or give you are the ones you're more realistically, more likely to encounter and work with in real life. It also just so happens to be the ones they'll most likely ask you about in the exam. So the ones I'm about to list are the ones you're more than likely to get in the exam. And yes, they do ask you about port numbers in the exam. Which exam am I talking about? So for the people new to my channel, I'm talking about the CompTIA Network Plus Certification Exam, the international exam from the vendor. So yeah, you do need to know the port numbers I'm about to go and list. So let's get on with it. What are those port numbers? The first one I have for you guys is 20. Then I've got 21, 22, 23, 25, 53, 80, 80, 80, 110, and 443. Or 443, I just call it 443, it's easier. So those are probably not all of these extra well port numbers, but that's the most of it, I ran out of room. So what are these port numbers? The first one is FTP, File Transfer Protocol. The second one, 21, is also File Transfer Protocol, not used for the exact same thing, you can go look it up if you want to, you just need to know that they're both FTP. It's all you need to know from an exam's perspective. You don't need to know exactly what they're used for from an FTP standpoint. As long as you know it's FTP, File Transfer Protocol, you'll be good. Now 22, that is SSH, Secure Shell. 23, it's Telnet. So SSH, Telnet, you know, remote connecting to a device, normally via command console of some kind. Telnet is just in, or oh, Telnet, next. <laughs> Telnet is just in clear text and SSH is generally more encrypted. So it's actually kind of falling away these days because of how unsecure it is. 25 is SMTP. You can think of that as sending email. So that's the well-known port number for email. It's not the only one for email. 53 DNS, domain name service or server, depending on how you want to go and call it. 80 is HTTP, hypertext transfer protocol. So that's another way it's normal, normal old school web browsing. 8080 is also HTTP. 110 is POP3. It's the only one you need to know, you know, but there's actually other ones as well. I mean, for example, 109 is POP2. Not Nobody know, uses POP2. I don't think a solo live still uses that. And for the most part, POP3 is also becoming extinct nowadays. But yes, 110 is POP3. So that is receiving email. And 25 was sending email. And then lastly, on my list, we've got 443, which is HTTPS. It's an S at the back. What does that mean? The S stands for secures. We already know HTTP stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And the S stands for secure. Now, do you need to know what the abbreviation stands for in the exam? No. You do not need to know what the abbreviation stands for when you go and write this exam, although it will make the exam easier for you to understand the questions. So if I, for example, talk about HTTP in a question and you don't know what HTTP stands for, the abbreviation that is, then the question might be somewhat confusing, you know. So it will benefit you to obviously know what the abbreviations are and what they stand for. So, but more importantly, as long as you know which port number is what, at least when it comes to these ones I've just listed, then you'll be ace for a way. You'll be 100% for the exam. So that's all you need to know from an exam perspective. All right, folks, I hope this lesson has been informative. If it has been, please give the video a like. And if you'd like to know when I release other lessons for this course or pretty much any other course for that matter, remember to also subscribe. 
Lastly, special shout out and thank you to the sponsors of this channel. Thank you very much, guys. And if you yourself would also like to go and do that, you can find that information in the video description down below. All right, folks, see you on the next lesson.